Bokit Dolph Khabri, my name is Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Russian submarine strikes ISIS targets near Deir Azor, according to the article here on RT in Syria, with caliber cruise missiles from the Mediterranean. Uh, they also have included a live video of the rockets going off there. Of course, I do like to keep in mind when we're looking at Deir Azor, we know that the U.S., uh, along with ISIS and Kurds, are op operating on the eastern side of the uh, the Euphrates River there near Deir Azor there, and Russia and Syrian troops are operating on the west and also on the eastern shores as well. Uh, so the thing is, is we got to keep in mind, we don't know as of yet, has there been any casualties uh, that could be U.S. casualties uh, on that side with the U.S. so close to ISIS and, of course, embedded with Turkish forces. So we'll have to wait to see how... How that plays out, what the, what the, we know that Russia is saying that the target was ISIS militants, was arms depots, etc. But will it have any effect on the Kurds or U.S. forces that are operating very close with ISIS in that proximity there? Wait to see how that turns out. Uh, Amichai uh, Stein uh, is reporting, too, that there has been, uh, this is a breaking report that has not come out on mainstream media as, a, as of yet. 200 people were killed in North Korea's nuclear testing facility after a massive collapse in an underground tunnel due to the sixth nuclear test last month, according to TV uh, Ashai. So other than that, we're not seeing any other reports on this, uh, but this is coming out from Israel. Amichai Stein, who also uh, works for a television broadcasting station there in Israel. Kind of curious to see how that plays out. We know the Chinese are already saying that uh, if the uh, Koreans do another nuclear test there, it could cause the entire mountain to collapse, would, which would become a total uh, environmental disaster uh, for nuclear radiation leak. Very serious situation indeed. And a Turkish airline, an A320, has to land in Ukraine uh, because of a bomb threat. From flying from Moscow to Turkey lands in Ukraine. Now, I, I just can't help but throw this in there. I always feel a little bit suspicious when it comes to Turkey to begin with and their relationships with Russia, but especially when it comes to Ukraine because Petro Poroshenko actually met with Erdogan and they were talking about taking out Russia. This was back, of course, before the, the, uh, the coup that took place in Turkey that was only staged with the Turkish help and the U.S., uh, there to make it look like it was a real coup in order to get Turkish forces on Russian side there. So always a bit suspicious about what that relationship is with Turkey and Ukraine. Can't help but wonder what's going on there. It already happened on his uh, Twitter page is reporting just breaking out a few minutes ago here. Reuters is saying that President Trump will not be uh, visiting the demilitarized zone uh, on the border of North and South Korea. So glad to hear this myself. We've been saying over and over and over it was an unwise decision. We've said it on here on Israeli News Live as well as on Flashpoint on uh, Hebrew Nation Radio. Uh, so we've been trying to get that word out ourselves, saying that we thought it was a very risky proposition for the president uh, to visit this demilitarized zone because of the possibility of either a one a uh, strike by North Korea on that region there to try to take the president out or even a false flag event where they utilize that opportunity to uh, do something to the president and then blame it on North Korea. I'm Stephen Bernoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Erev Tov.